I'm Lacey Fink, and this week is five days of going back to the basics. Hey guys, welcome back to Try Living with Lucy. If you're new to Refinery29's YouTube channel, click on the little subscribe box in the corner. And to everyone else who comes back week after week after week, thank you. Welcome back to my bedroom. I don't know about you, but I have had the most hectic summer thus far, and it's only July. I've been traveling for work, I've been running around left and right, and I really haven't had a moment to just sit and be present where I am. I started to notice that as we grow up and as the world around us gets more and more complicated, we have to learn to appreciate those real and simple moments and to get back to the basic and fundamental things that make life so great. So now I'm gonna tell you all about this week where I lived simply. Rewind to Monday. Monday for me was all about getting back to the basics by literally asking myself, who am I? Where do I come from? Where are my roots from? Well, my mom's whole side of the family is Italian, and I have Italian relatives that live in Italy just outside of Rome, and my Italianness definitely shines through in certain aspects of my personality, such as my overactive hand gestures. But even still, living in New York City, I feel like I've completely lost touch with these roots, and in particular, with my Italian culture. So as you might already know, and as many of my Italian followers out there can definitely attest to, in Italy, food is not just nourishment, it's life. Almost every aspect of daily life in Italy is centered around food and eating meals. And to be completely honest with you, in my current life here, Food is almost an afterthought. I'm so busy all day that sometimes I don't even have time to ask myself what do I actually want to eat. And I wind up just grabbing the easiest or most convenient meal on the go and I call it a day. So on Monday I changed that and I centered my whole day around my food. I brought my Italian roots to me by going down to Little Italy in Lower Manhattan and I started out at Gelso and Grand making my favorite food ever, pizza. Are you Italian? Yes, I am. Me too. <laughs> High five. Perfect. All right, we're ready. <laughs> Working alongside their chef, I made two delicious pizzas. <laughs> nice. This restaurant, like many restaurants, uses its own pizza making technique. So it's not the traditional Italian style of making pizza. But my philosophy is that wherever there's pizza, there's Italy. <gasps> there you go. Hi. Prettiest thing I've ever seen. I love you so much. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Then I went to my second stop on my Italian food journey, Aunt Jake's Pasta Lab. So on Monday, I got a private one-on-one -on -one pasta making lesson with their instructor. So you're Italian? Mm -hmm. Grew up uh, in Brooklyn, so the Brooklyn Italian type of flavor. Nice. She was self-taught, so she had her own pasta making method, but essentially she just cracked a few eggs into a little well of flour, added a pinch of salt, and mixed it all together. Then we worked together to flatten out the dough and we used this machine that we cranked in a circle and it created these long flat sheets. Wow. After we let them dry, we sliced them into strips to make tagliatelle. All right, so let's get this boiling. Wow, that is beautiful. <laughs> Bye, see you soon. And at the end, we mixed it up with fresh tomato sauce and I consumed it. Lucy, you did good. It's really amazing to me because this passion for food is in my blood. It's part of who I am. But over the past few years, I've really been pushing it aside as I focus on my go-getter mentality. And even if your city doesn't have any cultural offerings like mine did, that's the beauty of home cooking. So go to the grocery store, buy some local ingredients, and get back to your roots. Tutto bene. When we're young, we don't really overthink things and we just give ourselves the chance to do whatever makes us feel good. So when we're hungry, we eat. When we're tired, we nap. And then we get a little older and real life just hits us hard. Go here, do that, work on that, move, learn, build, grow, keep going, more, more, more. Our modern day society rewards doers and go-getters and while I actually firmly believe in that mindset, there's also something to be said about stopping and just taking some time off. Tuesday for me was about radical self-care. Taking some time to let go of the stresses and all the pressures of daily life and reminding myself that if I'm tired, I should relax. 
And if I'm hungry, I should eat. So I woke up on Tuesday morning and the first thing I did was I threw my phone into a drawer. Out of sight, out of mind. Next, I was pretty hungry, so I went into the kitchen and I whipped up a delicious smoothie bowl. I mixed pataya, raspberries, strawberries, banana, and almond milk as the base. And then once it was all blended, I topped it with strawberries, banana, kiwi, dried figs, cacao nibs, chia seeds, and a dollop of peanut butter in the middle. It was so beautiful. Mind blown. I built a little fort in my living room using blankets and pillows. I love drinks that have no added sugars, so I grabbed a grapefruit spindrift from the fridge, my favorite flavor. And then I just sat down in front of the TV, I totally chilled out, and I brought myself back to the basics by watching my favorite childhood cartoons. Comment below to guess what cartoon I was watching. After my amazing snack, I went into the bathroom for some beauty self-care. I started by dry brushing my skin for exfoliation and to improve my circulation. Then I took a nice warm bath. When I got out, I wrapped myself back up in my silk robe. I moisturized my entire body and then I popped on a unicorn face mask. These mindful solo moments that I had on Tuesday really helped me push against the complexities of daily life. By Wednesday, I was feeling a lot more grounded and calm, thankfully. So I started digging really deeply and asking myself, what's one thing that I used to spend a lot of time doing that I feel like recently I haven't been able to dedicate time to? And immediately, my mind went to my fiance, Michael. I met Michael back in high school, so we were young, wild, and free when we first met. We didn't have that much on our plates back then, so we would just spend our time getting our schoolwork done, and then hanging out together, getting to know one another, and building a meaningful relationship and as we've grown up together and now living in New York City, right here, our lives have changed a lot and it seems that everything in our daily lives seems to center around work. We're separated for most of the day at work and then when we come home, we're both so exhausted so we just go to sleep so that we can wake up and do it all again. And as our relationship grows and as even more responsibilities are put on our plates, it's going to be really important that we know how to prioritize our relationship. So I started that on Wednesday. I picked out an activity that Michael loves that we usually don't get the chance to do together, and then we spent the entire day at the Chelsea Piers driving range hitting golf balls. Whoa! He taught me the proper way to hold the clubs. Hey, bad, 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 bad. <laughs> and then we just goofed around and had fun. Today, I try out being a professional golfer. This is Michael for hire. <laughs> Nice! Building a successful relationship requires work and energy and attention. It's like a plant. If you nurture it and you water it and take good care of it, it will flourish. Hey! Yeah, it comes back up. How'd that get there? That was crazy. <laughs> So I've been talking a lot about work, work, work this whole video. I've been saying work is the reason that I don't have the energy to put towards self-care and I don't have the time to build my relationships. But the truth is, I love my work and work is my fuel. I love my job and I love the work environment I'm in, but sometimes I just get sucked into the nitty gritty tasks of my day-to-day -day job and I start getting stressed out about things that I really don't need to stress about. So on Thursday, I asked myself how I could get back to the basics when it comes to work and my office life. And the first thing that came to mind was remembering how important it is to take a break when your brain is working in overdrive. So on Thursday, I said no thank you to the speedy morning coffee at my desk, and instead, I stood myself up and I used it as a time to reconnect with a coworker and to get out of the office. It was actually a great way to start the day because instead of just sitting at the desk and getting started the moment you arrive, we went outside and we let our brains wake up a little more naturally. We had a great, very meaningful conversation, and we actually found that by the afternoon, we were functioning a lot better just because of that one simple break. Then later in the afternoon, we had a group meeting scheduled, and normally in these meetings, everyone comes with their cell phones and their computers, and everyone's multitasking while we're having a group discussion. But I made sure we brought this meeting back to the basics. So we all dropped our phones and computers into a little bin before we went into the room. We completely ditched the technology and we turned this into an in-person meeting. The best colleagues ever. Cheers. Cheers. I brought in some papers and pens and we did an old school creative brainstorming activity. We came up with tons of new ideas for Try Living With Lucy episodes. I think one of the best things for, for me to do is to kind of just ask people like, what do you and your friends talk about? Financial planning slash saving. Mm -hmm. Vacation options. Great. Books that we read and Cardi B. 
finding happiness beyond work. Beer brewing. Yay! Mm. Dogs. But most importantly, I think everyone just had a good time. And they felt like everyone else was paying attention to them when they spoke. And it was a really great way to bring it all back. I knew that you guys were gonna love this episode topic and relate to it deeply, so for the final challenge in the episode, I wanted to be inspired by you. I made a post on my Instagram asking you guys if there was one thing you could spend more time doing to get back to the basics, what would it be? And I got so, so many replies from you guys, but what really stood out to me was that so many of you suggested reading. I completely agree with this one. Reading comes in waves for me, so there are times when I'm super engrossed in a good book and I just can't put it down, but then I have dry seasons where I just don't pick up a book at all. When I'm in the middle of a good book, I feel like it affects my day. I feel like I'm smarter in my daily life, I feel more well-spoken, and I just feel happier overall. So I took your advice on Friday and I sat right here on my bed and I just read. I've been especially drawn into this one self-help book about Ayurveda, and I'm working on five days of Ayurveda, so stay tuned for that. But I also started a few other books that have been on my reading list, and I just gave myself hours and hours to sit and read. If you're stressed out, I want to make sure that you don't feel like you're alone. It's really, really easy to get caught up in the stresses and the complexities of the world around us. And most of the time, we're so focused on our little issues that we forget that we're part of something bigger. And you won't be able to enjoy your life to its fullest potential if you don't give yourself time to go back to the basics and just simplify a bit. I am definitely gonna continue to implement this mindset into my days going forward, so please comment below and let me know how you rediscover yourself or live your most authentic life. And as always, comment below and let me know what you wanna see me try next time for five days at a time. Bye guys. Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. Click here for another video on Refinery, here to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and here for my personal YouTube channel. Bye.